Sometimes a company have to take bold steps to push its boundaries and get to the next level. Well, ABML did something like that over the weekend and let's talk about it in this video and we are starting right now. But before, I would like to address something. I'm seeing a lot of comments posting as the club and they are asking to get connected on WhatsApp or Telegram, etc. This is not me, so please do not entertain those messages. I'm reporting them as spam, but I'm sure there are still few out there. And I wanted to address it in the video so everyone watching it knows. Okay, back to our video. So ABML filed their 8K on August 25th and it was disclosed on August 30th, which is today. And there is some interesting stuff there. While most of it is bullish, but there is one statement that made me think a little bit and of course that could come as a good thing or a bad thing for some of you. Let me know in the comments on what you guys think and let's start with the good stuff first. Okay so they disclosed their 8k filing which I have taken a screenshot over here and I'm gonna uh, blow it up here. So the first piece of news that caught my attention was this. Now it says on August 27 Douglas Gold resigned as CEO of ABTC or ABML. Mr. Cole remained in his position as chairman of the board of directors. The board appointed Ryan Melzer, CTO of the company to serve as a chief executive officer effective immediately. I mean, we are not investing in ABML because of Doug Cole, that was very clear. We are investing in ABML because of Ryan and the team and also the future potential this company has. So this makes total sense that Ryan takes over as CEO. Now we are getting ready to build execute and produce in the coming months. So this is really, really exciting news. It's really, really bullish and I was actually happy to see this. Now in the same 8K, they have mentioned CFO and CRO, Chief Financial Officer and Chief Resource Officer. What's interesting about their employment is compensation policy. Let's discuss this here and why I think this is a very bullish sign. So right here, I have taken the compensation policy on your screen that you see over here. David, who's their CFO, is getting 300 thousand a year as a salary. Scott who is their CRO or chief resource officer is getting about 225,000 as the base salary. Along with that they both are getting some stock based compensation based on various milestones. Now if you see over here 10% major stock exchange uplisting which will be some of them are saying Nasdaq listing they have applied for it but of course there are some rules that needs to happen before they can actually got listed on Nasdaq. Number two 1 million in revenue US dollars 10 million 25 opening of the plant, 25 10 million EBITDA and 25 50 million EBITDA. Now this is really bullish. The only thing different between David their CFO and Scott their CRO is that one filing over here it says 10% one time filing of all forms 10Q and 10K. This is directly for David not for Scott. Okay so why is this milestone or this screenshot is so important for this company? The milestone shows us that ABML or ABTC is getting ready for some serious traction because this equity award is very important to keep the talent engaged and keep working towards the bigger goal. The recent changes in CEO from Duck to Ryan and these two people David and Scott and the equity awards that they are going to get it's all a very bullish sign. But there is a big but for me personally. I have to discuss the elephant in the room. I will not do justice by not bringing it up. So Ryan taking over the CEO and ABML offering these milestone grant is amazing and very bullish in my opinion. But there are two things that's bothering me. Number one, the CFO's experience and history. CFO is a key role in company success and looking at their CFO's past experience, tenure, education, I'm not too bullish on his role with the company. Again, my opinion only, he may be wonderful in what he does, but his previous employment has been very short and he has not listed much of his education. I mean, he has not listed his education at all on the LinkedIn and I could only find his education on Bloomberg. Take a look at this. So this is his LinkedIn profile. No photo. Um, the only three uh, jobs that he had that he has listed on LinkedIn is right here, which is 10 months, one year, one year. Now, if somebody applies in my company to not even at CFO position, but any other position, the first thing I look at is their experience and how long they have been in a position because that shows stability and that the person performed well in the company. That's why company kept them for so long. 
So that's really, really key for me. So let's put it this way. If this person apply in my company to, to, to get hired as a CFO, I will not hire him looking at the experience, to be very honest. So then I went on Bloomberg and I did a little bit more digging and I then found out that he has a bachelor's degree from Western Michigan University, but he has not listed his education at all over here. Now, it could be because he's not in my network, but usually you can find people's education even though they are not in your network and you can connect with them to find out more details about them. But again, he could have a huge experience which is not listed on LinkedIn. I'm just looking at what I see online and I'm basing my opinion based on that. Now, of course, this is not a deal breaker, but in my opinion, CFO's role is really, really important for a company, especially for a company that's publicly listed. I expect them to have a better experience, personally, in my opinion. Now let's talk about their CRO, which is their chief resource officer. They are bang on on this hire. Like this guy is real deal. If you look at his profile right here, you can see the guy has been involved in mining for majority of his life. Along with that, he's basically doing a lot of other things in that area. He has been involved in mining for most of his life, which is truly great to see because he knows what he's doing. These are the type of people that I feel makes a company strong because they bring such a great deal of experience with them. Now, the second elephant in the room that I would like to discuss is that if you read their 8K further, this is what they're saying. So in their 8K, and I'm gonna mention it over here, and I'm gonna actually read it over here. Over the past few months, Ryan has increasingly taken over day-by-day -day leadership responsibility, including setting long-term company strategies, leading investor presentation, developing high-value strategic partnership. This is all great. This is all great. But this is what they're saying. Doug Cole, Douglas McKellen, and William Hunter have been instrumental in growing the company to where it is today. And as the company now transitioned to its growth stage with a focus on technology development and commercial manufacturing, these directors have informed the company that they do not intend to seek right here re-election at the annual meeting. Now, I'm a bit surprised that none of the directors want to continue or, or these three directors wants to continue. Now, this could mean two things. Number one, Ryan Meltzer has pushed them out because maybe they're not contributing much and he wants to bring an industry leader to open some doors which is what I would do personally if I was running the company. If a board of director is not contributing to a bigger bigger picture of the company, then there is no point for them being there because the whole point of board of directors is to give vision to the company and help the CEO, CFO, and the team to kind of open doors so they can go and do their thing. And the second reason, the directors are not confident with the future and they don't want to associate their name with the company. Now, I don't believe that's the reason, but of course, I have to look at it as an investor that why is this happening. Another thing I noticed is the huge uptick in the volume on Friday. Take a look over here. So this is the chart for ABML right here on your screen and you see this big green arrow and you see this big green over here. This was Friday 827. And if I go on Yahoo, you can see the volume over here. They, are, they traded almost 10.5 million shares on Friday 27th. The only good part was that the share closed above where it started. That's the only thing. So that tells me it was not something that they were dumping the shares. Probably the new hires got assigned or they were selling the share, but there were more buyers. That's why the price maintained and actually went up, which was really, really good to see. Now, if you see over here, their RSI is looking good, their MACD is looking good, and the price today is actually trading higher, maybe because of the news that Ryan has taken over the CEO role. So, I'm leaning towards Ryan's plan as I definitely see huge long-term potential, but as an investor, I'm keeping my ears open and carefully monitoring the company in the near future. I recently did a video on ABML and the jackpot. Do watch it, I'm gonna link it up here, where I discuss Ryan's plans with ABML and comment to let me know what are your thoughts on this latest news. I hope I provided some value and if you like the video, then please consider subscribing. Click on the like button so we can reach out to more ABML lovers. As always, thank you for joining me. Love you all. Until next time, you all have a sparkling day.